When they get to your website, there are very specific places where you should place ratings and reviews on your site in order to increase your conversion rate optimization. So those places are typically your homepage or your landing page. You should have social proof at the top when customers get there because when they get to your site, you have a fraction of a second to get their trust. And if, if they saw your social proof in search and then they get to your site and it's crick like there's nothing, there's no social proof whatsoever, then there's a disconnect. But if you have social proof at the top of your page, they're like, oh yeah, I saw that. I saw those ratings over here and oh, they're right here again. Okay, I'm in the right place. It's been confirmed to me that it's the same company. I feel good. They have authority. I trust them. Welcome to the e-commerce marketing podcast, the highly rated digital marketing podcast that provides weekly digital marketing tips and strategies from some of the world's top digital marketers and e-commerce entrepreneurs that will help you take your digital marketing to the next level. Sit back and enjoy this power packed episode hosted by Arlen Robinson, who is an e-commerce entrepreneur and digital marketing expert with over 20 years of experience. Hey, e-commerce marketing podcast listener. Are you looking to increase traffic and sales to your website? You can do this by launching your own affiliate program. Just visit getosi.com and sign up for a free trial today. That's getosi.com. Now get ready to hear from your e-commerce marketing expert of the week as they drill down to give you details on marketing strategies that can help grow your business. Welcome back to the e-commerce marketing podcast. Everyone, my name is Arlen. I'm your host. So today we've got a very special guest, Scott Brandley, who is the founder and CEO of Shopper Approved, one of the oldest, largest, and most strategic online review platforms in the world. Scott launched Shopper Approved in 2010, which quickly became one of the fastest growing privately held companies in America and has been featured nationally on the Inc. 500 and the Utah 100 list numerous times. Scott is also an expert in reviews, social proof, and behavioral design. Welcome to the podcast, Scott. Thanks, man. Glad to be here. Yeah, and thank you for joining us, and um, I'm glad to have you here. And uh, before we started recording, I was just commenting, of course, you, you guys have written a book called Reputation King, yes. about online reputation, online reviews, which is, yes, exactly. And uh, let me see if I can grab it. You guys sent me a copy and I was saying I hadn't had a chance to dive in, but I wanted to comment <laughs> on the packaging that you guys sent, which is pretty incredible. And I think it is definitely one of the best, uh, nicely um, put together packages. You know, there's like a, a letter in here, a card, there's the, a strategy guide as well. And then get this. this is something that I don't think I'll ever throw away is this what is this uh a million dollar bill which is uh something that's really cool yeah um, and then They're... even now on top of that we got some socks so um you guys have definitely uh, upped the ante on um product packaging design and uh including all of that so uh yeah great Thanks, job man there should be a little kickstand in the package too so you can display your million dollar bill on your desk Oh really? Okay, yeah. okay. I don't know so if I even noticed that. Okay, check I'll... check it. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look. Yeah. Maybe I missed that. <laughs> okay, gotcha. I will definitely do that because yeah, this is definitely something I'm not gonna gonna throw away uh, for sure. Cool. So uh, yeah, super excited. I'll, I'll definitely get into that. Um, you know, today, of course, like I said, we're gonna be talking about online reputation, online reviews, everything that you guys have been about for for uh, you know for quite a long time. Um, but you know, before we dive right in, why don't you tell us just a little bit more about, you know, how did you get into this? How, how did you get into this online review, online reputation space? Yeah. So I, I tell people I've been playing around on the internet since 1997. Um, so it's been, it's been a while and I mm -hmm. originally started out, um, I thought I invented web-based email. So that, that's the beginning okay. of my story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I had this great idea one day. I'm like, because email was just coming on the scene, but it was very manual and you had to do all these steps. And I came to my dad one day. I'm like, hey, I got this brilliant idea. What if 
you logged on to a website and you could check your email from any computer anywhere. And my dad's like, oh, that sounds so cool. So we hired a programmer here in Ogden from Weber State University, and he spent a year developing um, what we called mmail. Dot com. We were we were a couple letters okay. off on the front there, but but <laughs> okay. we made mmail.com and mm-hmm. we um we were just about to launch it and we discovered yes. hotmail. And we're like, oh, oh dang it. Okay. Uh, but <laughs> gotcha. The funny thing is, like back then we thought, well, I guess they create they got there first, so there's no point in trying, mm-hmm. but I, I should have just kept mm-hmm. doing it, right? Who knows where it would be? Yeah, now. yeah. <laughs> exactly. You never know. Now, were they was Hotmail already a thing before you had started it, or is it, it, just, it, it you, just they were in the early it stages? Was early stages, but it was taking off like oh, a okay. rocket. I see. And, gotcha. and so then so. at that point, we pivoted and we started selling mm-hmm. apparel, like T-shirts and okay. and and watches and ties and hats. And our believe it or not, our very first website was one page with drawings of t-shirts and a phone number mm-hmm. at the bottom of the page. That was it. Okay. And we actually had people <laughs> okay. call us wow. and make sales. <laughs> so I remember wow. running around. Uh, so our basement, our, um, our office was in the basement of my grandparents' house. And I remember the mm-hmm. first time we ever got a sale, somebody called us and, and, you know, we made the sale, took their credit card over the phone and I just freaked mm-hmm. out. And I remember just, running up the stairs and jumping and running around the table and like, we got a sale. And my grandparents thought I was mm-hmm. crazy. But yeah, <laughs> um, so that from there, we created um, our first e-commerce store. And then mm-hmm. um, we did e-commerce for a while. And then I realized the, the incredible opportunity around software. And so mm. we sold that company. And then we, we went all in on, in software in 2004. And then in 2006, Mm. we launched our first, um, product that really like hit and that's called trust guard and it's website security. So essentially what we would do is we would pretend like we were a hacker and we would go and try to try to hack our clients' websites. And then we would, then we would find vulnerabilities and we would tell them how to fix it. So then they would, their mm-hmm. customers would be safe. And so we still mm-hmm. have that business today and we've, we've help, helped thousands and thousands of websites protect their customers and then, and millions of consumers. Right. So that, that was mm-hmm. cool. That was 2006. And then in 2008, I, I went to buy something on Amazon. Amazon was really taking off at the time and, I saw what they were doing with ratings and reviews and I had this light bulb moment and it was like, why isn't anybody doing this for other websites? What, what's happening Mm -hmm. on Amazon? And that night I stayed up for several hours. I was just like writing down like this idea to create this review company. And so the next day I went to the office and I got everybody set down around a table and I pitched it, right? I'm like, guys, this is the future. This is like the next big thing. And crickets. I totally got shot down. Like they thought it was the dumbest (laughs) idea ever. And so Mm -hmm. um, I tabled it for a year and... Then eventually my dad and I got to the point where we were like butting heads all the time because we were both like okay. the chiefs, right? And we wanted to, we wanted, both wanted to do our own thing um, with trust guard. And so one day I had this moment of truth with my dad and I, I had him come and sit in my car in the parking lot. And I told him like, dad, I love you too much to fight with you. So I'm either going to walk away mm. or I need my own project. And so that day he said, okay, I'll let you build your review thing. And, but I get to control everything else in the business. And so I literally walked away from everything to build shopper approved and we launched it in, we launched it in 2010 and it's just taken off. So we've been doing it for almost 15 years now. So crazy. Wow. That's, that's, yeah. that's quite a story. So you, you, you kind of separated, you parted ways with what you were doing with your dad and yep. uh, you went on to just follow your gut and uh, it seems like it paid off. Yeah, yep. that's good stuff. And, 
you know, it, as far as working with family, it could go either way with it. You know, I've, I've seen business owners and that are, you know, maybe they're a couple or father and son. Sometimes it works just from what I've seen. Sometimes it works. And then sometimes it just could go terribly wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's I either see one or extreme or another where it's just working really well or it's just terrible. There's I don't think there's too much in between. And so you probably made the right move with that, because like you said, you, you kind of already saw there the bumping heads and, you know, both of you guys wanting to be chiefs. Um, and so it was pro that was probably the best call you made to to just move off and do your own thing. Yeah. And I mean, we still were partners, but we just ran our own products and companies. Right. It and, makes sense. And it actually did make our relationship better. So, yeah, yeah I, I can imagine. Yeah. Well, good stuff. Um, now, speaking of of shopper approved and, and, and online reviews, of course, as most people know that have done any shopping online or done anything online, reviews are, are really super significant. But one of the things I wanted to kind of dive into that a lot of brands may struggle with is, of course, they want to get as many positive reviews as they can, regardless of the platform, whether it's on their own sites, whether it's on Amazon or whether it is on some of the third party platforms. But I think what brands struggle with is, all right, I've got all these good reviews, but, you know, nothing's happening. I'm not increasing my conversions. How does how does a really brand correlate positive reviews, building all these reviews into a return on that, really, as far as increased sales and increased traffic to the site? What would what are some strategies that you've seen that you could recommend? So that's a great question, because I think a lot of businesses are in that boat where they're like, hey, I'm collecting reviews, but nothing's really happening. Well, yes, a lot of that comes down to strategy. So what most business owners don't realize is that they're so just to give you an example on Shopify, there's 170 different review apps. OK, wow. so there's only like five or six that actually have strategic partnerships with Google and Bing and Facebook and Walmart and X, right? So if if you go with a review company that um, looks pretty, but all they ever do is collect reviews and put them on your website, then you're essentially an mm -hmm. island, right? Because nobody knows about those reviews. And so the only time that they're right. ever gonna benefit you is if they actually get to your product page and see them. So you've just mm -hmm. missed out on the entire sales funnel, right? Where they don't know you exist. And if you do show up, you don't have any ratings next to your listings in like Google or on mm -hmm. social media, right? And so you miss out on right. that authority. You miss out on standing out from everyone else. You miss out on the social proof. And mm -hmm. so essentially you are an island on your website and nobody knows about it. You don't leverage that your reputation, your social proof anywhere else. And so mm -hmm. strategically, you need to find a review platform that has those relationships, those partnerships, because if you do, then now you can get those ratings out in multiple locations online. And I see. so especially like with Google, right? Google's the 800 pound gorilla in the space. So there's actually ways that you can get star ratings on almost every single listing that you have in Google. So you can get them mm -hmm. in your in your paid ads, you can get them in your product listing ads, you can get them in Google Shopping, you can get them in organic search for your store rating okay. and for your product reviews. Um, mm -hmm. So there's, you can basically have star ratings on almost every listing in Google if you know the strategy. If you don't, mm -hmm. they're nowhere. You you don't have any, yeah. and so then you just blend in with everyone else. Like there's nothing that makes you special or stand out online. So leveraging yeah. one, leveraging knowing how to leverage your your reviews in search is one half of that question. The answer to the question. The other half is when they get to your website. There are very specific places where you should place ratings and reviews on your site in order to increase your conversion rate optimization. So mm -hmm. um, those places are typically your homepage or your landing page. 
you should have social proof right at the top when customers get there, right? Because when they get to your site, you have a fraction of a second to get their trust. And if, if they saw your social proof in search, right? And then they get to your site and it's cricked, like there's nothing, there's no social proof whatsoever, then there's a disconnect. But if you have yes. social proof at the top of your page, they're like, oh yeah, I saw that. I saw those ratings over here. And oh, they're right here again. Okay, I'm in the right place. I've, my, my um, it's been confirmed to me that, that it's the same company. I feel good. They have authority. They, I trust them, right? So I'm gonna continue down the path. So, the, so it's important you have it at the top of the page. It's important that you have some type of review widget halfway down the page. And, and this is more like actual reviews, right? Like written reviews mm -hmm. from customers. At the top of the page, it's more like aggregate information, like 4.7 overall rating with 723 reviews, right? Like it can be aggregated mm -hmm. at the top. But in the middle of the page, yes. you actually want to start showing them what other people are saying. So you want to have some type mm -hmm. of a widget that has like written reviews on it. And then at the bottom in the footer, you want to have a, a little badge or a seal that just reiterates that social proof again. So that's typically the strategy on homepage and landing pages. And then when you're, as the customer continues through your site and they get to a product page or a, a category page with your different categories on it, then you want to have ratings underneath those products. And then mm -hmm. finally, when they get to the product page, you want to have product reviews showing up in very, in a very strategic way as well. And if you do that, your conversion rate will go way up because you're leveraging the, the social proof every step along the way. Yeah, that makes sense. I have never heard it put that way because you're right. It's they're seeing these reviews on these other sites, third party sites or wherever you're, you know, promoting them. And they're like, okay, great. This looks like a good company, but they're coming to your site. If you don't have that continued social proof there, then it's, a, it's like almost a disconnect. Yeah. You ha you're, you're putting it on there, like you said, on the landing page is just reiterating the reputation of your company all the way through like their, their entire journey. So yep. yeah, I think I can definitely see how that can help. Now, speaking of their journey, of course, a lot of customers are starting on Google and they're searching for whatever product. How does how do these reviews or a company that has a high reputation, high reviews, maybe a fair amount of uh, decent Google reviews, how does that translate to their search engine rankings and their overall visibility or does it? I mean, I know it's hard to say with Google, but is that is there some type of translation? Yeah, there? I think there is some correlation there. Um, one thing that's okay. really important is what we found. We've done, we've actually done some surveys, um, sent some surveys out there to, you know, online consumers to see what their behavioral pattern is, and what we've actually found is that um, two thirds, two out of every three online consumers, before they buy from a, a company online they will actually go and search in Google and try to triangulate the brand's reputation. And so they do that by mm -hmm. searching for like abc.com reviews, right? Because what they want to mm -hmm. do is they want to see what this company actually looks like behind the scenes, right? So, yeah. so they do yeah, this right. search and then if sometimes they'll find if, if a company's not managing the reviews properly online, Sometimes they'll find like one site that says, uh, like one review site that says like 4.6 stars, right? Then mm -hmm. another one might say like 1.4 stars and another one might say 2.2 stars, right? And so in their brain, right. they're trying to triangulate like, okay, I'm getting mixed signals here. Is this company really yes. what, they, what they claim to be? And so mm -hmm. one of the strategies that we teach is, um, we actually have a tool that allows you to redirect your customers to different open review platforms online after they buy. And so what that okay. does is if you do have, if you do have a site with a 1.4 star rating, right. 
then you can actually mm -hmm. send customers there after they buy to leave their review. And so what happens over time is that score naturally goes up and it equalizes at where the company's reputation truly is. Because we're not incentivizing or anything. All we're saying is after they buy, they're like, okay, hey, go leave your review over here. Right? I and so see. You're telling them specifically where to go on that review site where you don't have the good, good yes, reviews. I guess. Yes. And so, okay. so we're not like, we're not gaming the system or anything. We're just saying, Hey, go yeah. leave your review over there. Right. And so they mm -hmm. can say whatever they want. They can leave a one star, mm -hmm. but typically what happens yeah. if, if you run a good company, 95% of your clients are happy. Right. Right. So, so over time, what will happen is your reputation will equalize at a certain level. And that level is your mm -hmm. true reputation if you're actively collecting reviews from every single customer, right? Or you're trying to, yeah. right? Over a large sample size, right. your reputation will level out to where it truly is. And so if you just, mm -hmm. if you send customers to, you know, so many goes to Shopper Approved, so many goes to Trustpilot, so many goes to Reviews.io, so many go to site jabber, so many go to Facebook. Essentially what you can do is you can manage your reputation, but also control it in an ethical way. And so when, yes. when consumers do go to triangulate your reputation, now, instead of it showing 4.6, 1.4 and 2.2, now it's 4.6, 4.4, 4.3, right? And it's all totally mm -hmm. legit. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I like that. I've never, I've never heard it put that way. And uh, as a, as a particular strategy, it it also points out the fact that as a brand, how important it is to be aware of your reputation across all of these. I know it, it can be very difficult these days because you have all of these different third party sites, mm -hmm. review sites, but it's very important to keep up with everywhere you're getting reviews because, like you said, there could be one of these sites that, like you said, there's the you're 1.2 stars and it's people are triangulating your reputation. They come across that. They're like, wait a minute, this, that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't look too good. Let me, let me second guess this purchase. Exactly. They, you know, exactly. Pull, so one of the things the we do, not only do we redirect, we have the opportunity to redirect, but it's, but we have a, it's smart. Our system is smart. So it'll actually go out and let's be like, oh, you're not doing very good on that site. I'm going to send some, some of your customers there. And so it's constantly oh, wow. doing okay. that. So it, it actually mm -hmm. fixes your reputation automatically in real time. And then the other thing okay. it does is it actually goes and pulls your reviews from the web into one place. So now you can manage them all. Like you were saying, like you don't know necessarily what your reputation is across the web. We go and pull them all in mm -hmm. and tell you what it is. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we make it that's easy. Good stuff. Yeah. That's a, some powerful stuff. Now, with online reviews, reputation, all of that, one of the ne next biggest things that has really been popular these last several years or really has exploded recently is just the trends of brands incorporating user generated content into their marketing. So like you, you already mentioned the widgets where you put on your site that's reiterating the social proof that you have. Um, with user generated content, how, are there any other ways that you could leverage reviews and testimonials as a strategy to drive customers? Um, well, you can always like, yes. Like, so if you're writing content, for example, like um, a blog article or any type, like a press release, um, in social media, anything that you're you're creating content for, you can actually leverage reviews in that content. So you could quote customers, okay, right? So okay. have some customer quotes inserted into your content. That's a really good thing. Mm -hmm. On social media, you can actually add like a product photo and then have a customer review attached to it, right? So I the see. customer okay. is the one that's actually promoting the product through the review, yes. right? Rather than yeah. you just talk about it. Um, so there's, mm -hmm. there's things that you can do that way. One way that's that people might not can, well, it's kind of a hybrid of user generated content and company generated content or brand generated content mm -hmm. is Q and a, 
right? So okay. a lot of times customers will ask questions about a product and the company will write a quick answer, right? Like, does this come in blue? And they might write back and say, yes, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. But if you're strategic, you can actually optimize those questions for search results. So if somebody okay. says, does this come in blue, you could change that question to, you know, does this um, blue button up Henley shirt oh, okay. come in blue? <laughs> I see. Right. And right. then the answer could say, yes, this blue button up Henley t-shirt comes in blue. It also comes in, mm. you know, white, black, brown, right? Mm. And mm -hmm. it's also um, pre-washed, so it won't shrink. And right, so you can like come up with a really cool answer if you just think yeah. about it for a second, right? And and mm -hmm. the other cool thing is you can actually add um, code into it that optimizes it for um, the featured snippet. Okay. Right. Or for people also ask. Um, or worst case, which is still awesome, it could still show up at the top of search, right? So you can actually, mm -hmm. if you just think about content in the, and especially Q and A in the way of how can I optimize this for search and for mm -hmm. consumers that are reading the question, you can do a lot with it. Um, so that's yeah. something that I can, that I business, see it. yeah, probably businesses don't think that through very often, but it's extremely powerful. Yeah, I can see that it, it's really kind of like leveraging these Q&A platforms with really almost long tail keyword content as the, in the answers. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, instead of saying, yes, we do have blue uh, shirts, you're, 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 you're putting that long tail keyword to it. Yes, we provide a blue Henley, uh, you know, such and such style shirt right. in, you know, these various patterns. And then you're really that really is adding to your content and, and, you know, helping you rank for probably other keywords that you wouldn't normally um, be able to rank for specific. Yeah. So, a lot of times yeah, we'll see like a double listing, strategy. sometimes even triple listings. Okay. Like it, it's mm -hmm. powerful if you do it right. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can see that. Um, you know, with reviews, of course, there's the biggest thing that most brands are trying to, um, I guess you could say battle is, is the, is the negative reviews. Um, it's just unfortunate that, you know, no matter how good of an experience or product that you, you sell, there's always going to be someone that has an issue. Maybe it's the company brand's fault. Maybe it's just that person is just a, you know, it's just out to get you, you know, and it's never going to give a good, a positive review. It's just, it's just, that's what they do. They leave bad reviews and maybe it's your competitor, you know? So there's a variety of ways that brands get these uh, negative reviews. What would you say are some best practices for turning around these, which could be damaging comment comment into really an opportunity for the brand to actually grow? I love that question. That's one of my favorite questions, actually. Um, okay. So if you think about it in terms of the, the consumer looking to buy your product, what do you do when you go mm -hmm. on to Amazon, right? You go and look at the one star ratings because you want to see yes. how bad is bad, right? So yeah, if, you exactly. go, <laughs> if you go there and it's like, you know, they delivered this three days late or you know, the mm -hmm. box was damaged or something like that. Like you just kind of mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. That's like, that's as bad as bad. That means the product's good. So mm -hmm. I'm good. Right. But the other right. thing you can do with one star is they are a huge opportunity for you to make more money and to make more sales because mm -hmm. the consumer wants to see if you took care of other people like them. And so you mm -hmm. can actually leverage one star reviews First, you should be empathetic. So you should always re you should always reply publicly to every one star review you get. That's rule number one. Two, you should be mm -hmm. extremely empathetic, right? Like I'm so sorry this happened to you. You know, um, we and you can say something like, you know, we rarely run into a problem like this, right? Like you could even mention, you know, like, you know, 
Um, our customers are typically very happy with, with our products, as you can see by our 4.7 star rating, right? Like you, you can mm -hmm. um, spin that a little bit to be positive, right? Like, <laughs> but still be ethical. And then, um, yes. but, but show that empathy, right? Like, I'm really sorry. We're going to make it right. We're going to make it right. Mm -hmm. And then you, um, and then you make it right, right? You have to make it right. But what happens yeah. is now every time somebody goes and looks at a one, those one star ratings and they see the time and effort that you took to make that right, to, to make that right, that's yeah. worth a hundred five star reviews all day long. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Fixing one, one, one star review is worth a hundred five star reviews. And so I actually call that mm -hmm. a net positive review. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, yeah. so it's very strategic, but Look, it pays off in dividends if you do it right. Yeah. I, I can see what I was just getting ready to say with, I guess it depends on the platform, but of course the brand responds to these one star reviews. They go out of their way to try to right the wrong or whatever the issue was. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, they post that, that reply if, if it's possible on the platform, do they, how much weight is on the fact that, cause you know, brands will do this cause you know, no matter what, even if they don't write the wrong brands are going to put that they, they tried to write it, right. even if they don't necessarily do it. How important is it to get feedback back from that customer? Because I've seen cases where, you know, a brand will try to do that, but then the customer, you know, depending on the platform, will put another reply saying, you know, it's still an issue here. Or they'll leave another review saying, um, you know, basically calling the company out saying, you know, this is BS. They didn't resolve my issue. They tried to say they did. Um, how important is it? to to really get va the validation from your customer that everything was was resolved um i think that would actually be a great thing to do um mm -hmm. i'll have to talk to my programmers about adding something in there right to because that would actually okay. be really cool to almost ask another the customer for another review after the public yes. comment right um, I know exactly. I know on open review platforms, you can go and leave as many reviews as you want about anybody. So there, there yeah, are yes. times when if somebody, if a company doesn't actually take care of the customer, but they say they did, the customer can go back and leave another bad review. And mm -hmm. I mean, just take care of your customers, right? Like if you just take, yeah, if you yeah. just take care of them, that bad experience can be one of the best sales tools that you have in your company, right? And it costs mm -hmm. so little to solve um, a customer's problems typically, right? Like it might be like they got the wrong size or, you know, maybe it was damaged or it wasn't the right, you know, what mm -hmm. they thought it was. But if you fix it, right, now you can leverage it. You can leverage it forever mm -hmm. because now it's an asset. If you, if you just think of a one star as turning it into a net positive, it becomes an asset for your mm -hmm. business and you'll make way more money than you ever spent solving that one customer's problem. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. And that's, that's, that's great advice focusing on those, those one stars because you're right, you know, on Amazon, you, you've got all of the good reviews to five stars or four stars and, you know, those are great. People will look at that and they'll say, oh, okay, you know, usually in people's minds, I know in, in my case, I'm looking to see, of course, the, you know, what's the percentage of five and four star reviews. If, mm -hmm. it, you know, I kind of have my own little algorithm. If it's like at least 80% of them are like at five and four star, <laughs> then I'm good to go. But then you're right with those one star reviews. I do look at that and then I'm like, all right, if I'm starting to see 5% or more, then I'm getting a little questioning. I'm mm -hmm. starting to question. And then I'll look at those one star reviews. And I think you're right. That's when that's the opportunity for a brand to, to pull people over if they're, you know, on the fence a little bit and they see how they resolve those particular one star reviews. Cause it, it could be something small. Like you said, it could be just, um, error, uh, the, the packaging it came late or, you know, packaging was damaged, something, you know, something small like that, but people just wanted to gripe about that. So, yep. yeah, I think um, focusing on those one stars is, is really important. I think a lot of times brands just 
overlook it. They're trying to overshadow them by just getting more of the five star reviews, but that's not really what they want to do. Right. Yeah. That's, that's the wrong strategy. The worst thing a company can do is not reply to their one star reviews. Right. Yeah. I, I can see that. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, Scott, this has been an awesome conversation. Um, definitely enjoyed this. I can talk about online reviews and reputations just for, for hours and hours. Um, but I know our listeners and viewers have learned, learned a lot from this. Um, you know, definitely appreciate having you on. I always like to switch gears here with my last question, just so our audience can get to know you a little bit better. If you don't mind sharing uh, one closing fun fact about yourself that you think we'd be interested to know. Oh, wow. <laughs> Well, I've over the years, we were talking about this earlier. We both, we've both mm -hmm. been in, in uh, e-commerce forever, but over the years, I've actually created over 40 different software products. And oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> um, most people don't know that, but you know, only, <laughs> only three of them have succeeded. Right. So okay. I guess um, that's, but as long as you learn from your mistakes, and you keep mm -hmm. and you keep moving forward eventually you will succeed and, okay and so yeah. for those of you out there that are listening to this and maybe you're struggling in your business or you've had businesses that have failed in the past just keep going eventually you will succeed and especially if you can listen to podcasts like this where you're learning from experts in their fields right you're going to learn the right things to do in order to be successful in the future yeah, yeah, for sure. Very, very well said. And I, I totally agree. You just got to keep going. You got to keep going with it. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like the, the statistics. You, like you said, you put out 40 different products um, online and three of them took off. But that's and you know, that, that's really all you needed to be successful. Right. But you just kept going and going and going, figuring stuff out, seeing what didn't work, what did work. And um yeah, I think you 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 got you got us beat by probably about uh, twenty or five products. I think we probably put out <laughs> over over fifteen or so over the years. But uh, yeah, now you know there's of course have been a few that have stood the test of time. Yeah, that right. um, you know we're we're focusing in on. But um, yeah, it's it's all part of business. You got to just keep going and figure it figuring it out. Um, well, Scott, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Um, you know, lastly, before we do let you go, um, if you can let our listeners and viewers know the best way to reach you, um, if they want to pick your brain any more about online reputation. Sure. So, um, you can reach out to, um, my personal email is scott at shopperapproved.com. Feel, feel free to reach out to me. I can help you in any way I can. Um, also, I'm, we'd like to give all of your listeners a free digital copy of reputation king as our gift okay awesome um so that if, okay. if they go to reputationking.com forward slash e-commerce marketing then they okay. can get the book and the streaming audio book for free so okay awesome well, i really appreciate that so um i definitely encourage people to to, to to take you up on that offer, we'll have the link in the show notes. So that's reputationking.com forward slash e-commerce marketing uh, to get the book, the audio book and, uh, you know, see, uh, see how they can take their business reputation to the, to the next level. That's what it's all about. Well, uh, thanks again, Scott, for offering that and, and providing that to our listeners and viewers. We really appreciate it. And uh, it's really been a pleasure having you on the e-commerce marketing podcast. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce marketing podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and share it with everyone you know. Are you looking to take your digital marketing to the next level, but are tired of weeding through countless YouTube videos with unproven and untrusted marketing strategies? Well, we have the answer for you. The More Sales Every Month Online Digital Marketing Course. In this information-packed course, you will learn effective keyword research, link building, content marketing, and much more to attract and convert your site visitors into paying customers. Just go to moresaleseverymonth.com and sign up today for a low one-time fee.
In addition to this power-packed course, if you would like to get access to a growing repository of digital marketing articles, PDFs, and eBooks, check out getosi.com resources and opt in to get full access to our library of priceless marketing information to help you take your digital marketing to the next level.